Hey iOS devs, today we're going to be going over AWS Amplify, the auth category. So auth is short for authentication. It allows you to authenticate your user and allowing them to sign in and sign out and things like that. So auth under the hood, what it's doing is using Amazon Cognito, which allows you to configure user pools and identity pools and all these things are built in for you. So we're going to be using the AWS Amplify CLI to set up and configure our project. Then we're going to push those configurations up to the cloud and we'll also see what it looks like to start implementing some code to check our auth status inside of our iOS app. So let's go ahead and jump right on it. So as you can see here, I'm starting off in my terminal at the root of my project. So if I do ls, you can actually see that we're at the root of my iOS project. So as you can see here, we have my Xcode project and the actual folder which contains all of our uh, source code files. So first thing that we want to do is we want to run amplify init, which will create our, pro our Amplify project locally, and it's going to create it in our backend as well. So once we run Amplify init, it's going to ask us a series of questions asking things like the project name. If you go ahead and press enter, you're going to actually get the default answer, which is right here um, in the parentheses. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter in the default name and uh, enter a name for the environment. I'm going to go ahead with dev which editor do you want to use if you need to um, open up a file we're not going to be covering this today but you could go ahead and choose any of these i'm just going to go with vs code and we want to make sure that we specify the correct platform in our case it's going to be ios next it's asking if we want to use an aws profile i'll say yes and i'll choose my default profile once the configuration is all finished and done and it has been sent up to the cloud, we can actually check that configuration by running Amplify Console. Running Amplify Console will take you directly to AWS Amplify and it's going to go into the console service where you're able to see all the information and details about your project. So if you wanted to take a look at the authentication, you can kind of see what's going to go in here. Right now there's nothing in here, but it's saying that all we need to do is run this command right here, which is amplify add auth. So let's head back over to our terminal and let's go ahead and run that. So just like it said, I'm going to run amplify add auth. And now it's going to ask me another series of questions so that we can configure our auth category. So I'm going to go with the default configuration and we're not going to be uh, really diving deep into this right now, whether how, how the user signs in, but I'm going to just go ahead and specify username. And do I want to do anything advanced? I'm going to say no. And that's pretty much it. Now we have our Amplify auth category all configured locally, but we still need to push those changes to the cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and run it, this Amplify push command right here and that will actually push those changes that we made locally to our auth category to the cloud. So go ahead and enter in amplify push and now we can see a status summary of what changes have been made locally and what is actually going to be pushed to the cloud. So we can see which categories have been affected. In this case only auth has and the resource name that we gave our our auth category which is this. Our operation is create and the, pl the provider plugin is going to be the AWS cloud formation because that's what it's using under the hood. So are we sure we want to continue? And we go ahead and press enter for yes. All right, and there we go. We have our message that says all resources are updated. So that means that our auth category has been sent to the cloud and has been configured the same way that we have it locally. So that's really good. And if we actually go ahead and run LS, you can see that we now have this amplify configuration.json file and this aws configuration.json file. Now we'll be taking a look at those in a minute, but first what we need to do is we need to get the amplify libraries into our iOS project and use them. So we're going to be actually be using CocoaPods to install those uh, libraries onto our project. So let's start off by running pod init. And after running pod init, we should have a pod file in our root directory. And here it is. So go ahead and open up the pod file with whatever editor you would like. 
And as you can see, I have this basic pod file. Now what we need to do is we need to specify which platform we're on. So we want to uncomment this line. And then we also want to change the version that we're going to be specifying. I'm gonna be using iOS 14, but you can specify whichever version that you want as long as it's above iOS 11. And for the framework section, what we're going to do is we're gonna pass in two different pods. The first one going to be Amplify and the second one going to be Amplify plugins slash AWS Cognito auth plugin. So Amplify is the main framework that we're going to be importing. And then if we want to use different categories, then we specify which categories we're going to be using by specifying which plugin we want to use. So that's what we're doing here. Then all we need to do is save the file and we can run pod install repo update. And there we go. All of our pods have been installed. Let's go ahead and open up the new XC workspace. All right, and inside of our project, you can see that we have this very simple view. It's just a button that says get started. So we're gonna be tapping a button and then calling some functionality to check our auth status a little bit later. But it's a very simple layout. As you can see here, we have the auth status, um, which is just a string. So this is just some way to display information to the user and we're going to update that auth status, that string, whenever we find out if the user is currently signed in or not. So let's go ahead and go up to our app object. Now, if you're working on a UI kit project and you're not working in the new Swift 2.0 type project, then this would be essentially your app delegate. And everything that we do here is going to essentially happen in your did finish launching with options method. So first things first, we need to import Amplify and Amplify plugins. Next, we need to create a function that's going to configure all of our Amplify resources. So I'll just call it configure Amplify. So to configure Amplify resources, what we have to do is we have to add in the specific plugin that we plan on using, then call Amplify configure but each of these methods are throwing methods which means that we need to wrap everything in a do catch block so let's go ahead and add in the do catch block and our configuration methods so as you can see here like i said we're going to be wrapping everything in a do catch block and if we have an error then we're just going to simply print out that we failed to configure amplify now, in order to configure Amplify, we need to add in the AWS Cognito Auth plugin. So we just create an instance here and um, pass it into our add function on the Amplify object. And then we run try Amplify configure, and that's going to configure any plugin that was passed in. And just so that we know if this was successful or not, right off the bat, let's go ahead and add in another print statement. All right, a function is no good unless you call it. So in our init method of our app object, we're going to call configure amplify. And there we go, we should be all set. So let's go ahead and run the app and make sure that everything is working as expected. So our app is running, but we got the fail to configure amplify. And the reason is because we actually didn't add the configuration files to our project. So let's go over to the folder that holds all of our source code files and we're gonna to go to add files to our project. Then we need to make sure that we navigate to the root directory of our project and we should be able to see that we have the amplify configuration.json file and the AWS configuration.json file. So I'm gonna command click and make sure that both are selected. Then I'm going to make sure that I add those to the project. Now, as I can see, we have our updated configuration files which contain the information about our AWS Cognito auth plugin and the AWS configuration file that contains information about the user pool and the credentials provider and things like that. So now if we go ahead and run the app again, we should actually see the success message. And there it is, configured Amplify successfully. So the very last thing that we're gonna do is just simply check the auth status of the user. So let's go back over to our content view and create a new function called check auth status. So what we're gonna do in check auth status is we're going to fetch the current auth session, 
With that information, we should be able to determine if the user was signed in or signed out. Now, obviously, since we're not covering sign in and sign out in this video, we should have a signed out user. And then we can just simply update our status that says the user is signed out. We're also going to need to check to make sure that there haven't been any errors as well. So let's go ahead and import Amplify and start writing out some of this code to fetch the auth session. So what we have here is we're calling auth session, and Amplify Framework tends to follow this pattern where it's going to provide you a, a callback that is giving you a result. Now a result, you would usually switch on it, and it's going to give you either a success or a failure. And when I say failure, it's it means that this particular thing failed, not that you that the user is signed out or something like that it's saying that this particular request has failed and then it will provide you with a error that is directly related to the category that you're calling on so in this case we're calling on auth so we're going to be getting an auth error so if we do get an auth error if it, it if it does fail to call for whatever reason we'll just simply print out failed to fetch the auth session and we'll print out the auth error if we are able to get the, the auth session, then it will provide us an auth session object where we can actually use any of the properties of that object. So if we do get a success, we're just simply going to print out the current user is signed in and there's a property called is signed in, which is a bool. So we'll specify if that's true or false. So now what we want to do is we also want to make sure that we're updating our UI. So we have this auth status, which is directly tied to this text label. And as long as auth status is not null, right, nil, then we're going to actually see that text is going to appear on the screen displaying if our auth status is signed in. So let's go ahead and update our auth status based off of this in, is signed in property. So we're going to check, is the user signed in? If they are signed in, then we'll just update our auth status to say user is signed in. If they're not signed in, then we'll just say user is signed out. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're calling this check auth status whenever our button gets tapped. And now all we need to do is simply run the app. All right, so first things first, we get our configured Amplify successfully, so that's a very good sign. And then back over here in our simulator, we we have our button right here, and if we hit get status, we can see user is signed out. And then it also prints in, in the logs, the current user is signed in, and that's false. So that's pretty much it. That's all we're going to be covering for today. But if you're interested in seeing how to sign a user up, how to sign a user in and also log them out, then you can go ahead and catch the next video. That's going to be it for today. Thank you for your time. Go out there and keep coding passionately.